It's your host, Agent Beamstar. Let's get right into the news. <laughs> Yo, the amount of drama and news that dropped today alone is massive. NFL 2K is coming out, whole bunch of juiciness, drama in the community. But before we get to all of that, I have an announcement I am so excited to make. For the last few months, me, Davis, Phantom, and Duke have been working really, really hard to come out with what we're calling AMP. It's a new group, a collective. We're gonna have our own channel for the group where we release videos every single Monday. We already recorded a bunch of videos and it, I'm telling you right now, you're not gonna wanna miss the first one because it's a 2v2 tag team boxing video. I know, I'm not in shape to box at all, but we did it and it was hilarious. We did not hold back. We're trying to get the channel to 59,997 subscribers then we're gonna drop the video. I'm so excited about this, this AMP, any means possible. We're gonna get things done by any means possible. So the link is in the description or you can type AMP on YouTube, do however you like to, but show some love. We're trying to get that channel booming. Guys, I'm so excited about that. And the videos we've recorded are incredible. Here's a teaser. It's all about the motherfucking money. Hey, hey, you're not dead. I swear to God, no of the day. I actually don't know what it is. Oh, <laughs> you might have thought that NBA 2K20, because it has the same neighborhood and it's not really getting the updates it should be getting, that the game performed poorly. I thought that 2K19 would have most likely outperformed it, but it turns out that's not the case because some statistics came out saying otherwise. Per NPD, in the US, NBA 2K20 had the best opening month ever for a sports game. Already the best-selling title of the year. NBA 2K19 sold 12 million globally, and the series is close to 100 million total units. Growth from 2K20 will be driven by unit sales and recurrent spending. So, uh, yep, it's another year, guys, of NBA 2K getting another career year in terms of performance. I'm not gonna lie, at this point, they just keep surprising me. Because in 19, we kind of knew it was gonna happen, but I don't think nobody expected that to happen 2K20. For our next! Story of the day, if you were playing a game of NBA 2K for $100,000, how intense would it be? The answer is incredibly intense. I've played games for $500 where I was sweating bullets. In fact, I usually sweat bullets when I play for free. In the finals of NBA 2K's global championship where $100,000 was on the line, this happened. Patterson, shot clock running down, Leonard again, Paul George on the cut. And he can't get it to go. 30 seconds left. Giannis, the Middleton. And he what? takes a jump shot. <laughs> Yo, if that happened to me, how many controllers? I would, nothing in this room would be safe. Everything is under threat of being broken. Oh my God, and so what a tragic way to lose $100,000 because Middleton decided to pull up for a two foot jump shot that he missed. That was quite possibly the biggest choke in NBA 2K history. <laughs> Nowhere. We all just woke up. Turns out NBA 2K is not playing no games because they're coming out with an NFL 2K. Surprise everybody. That's something that the communities have been asking for for an infinite amount of time. For those who don't know, NBA 2K used to have an NFL counterpart, of course, but because EA struck a deal with the NFL in the mid 2000s for its exclusivity, NFL 2K was no longer a thing. So it wasn't that they decided to stop making games is that they had no choice but to stop making games. And so for the last decade and a half, EA's been uncontested 
in the football department. Obviously, we know EA has been trying to get into the NBA department with NBA Live, but they've been failing miserably. So I guess 2K is taking this as an opportunity to come out with their own product to compete with what EA has going on with Madden. Okay, so iPod King Carter released this tweet here saying NFL 2K22 with a whole gang of question marks. And he showed some screenshots here of a press release that 2K launched, and in the press release, they say this. EA Sports is the exclusive publisher of NFL simulation games, and our partnership with the NFL and the NFL Players Association remains unchanged. Our agreements have always allowed for non-exclusive development of non-simulation games on various platforms. Our commitment to NFL fans, which spans almost 30 years, has never been stronger, and we're having our biggest year yet. Madden NFL 20 is the most successful game ever in the franchise, and new modes like Superstar KO and la 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 la. So basically, 2K found a workaround for competing and taking market share from what EA's been having going on for the last decade and a half. So if 2K can't create simulation football games, they're gonna create arcade football games. But that's not out of nowhere neither because those of you who've been playing video games in the mid 2000s remember a series called NFL Street. It was incredibly popular. And so the same way that 2K bought NBA Playgrounds and called it NBA 2K Playgrounds 2, I think they're trying to do the same thing here and take the arcade market of football the way they tried to take the arcade market of basketball. I think it's a smart move. I dead ass believe that arcade casual sports games are still a thing. Even though there aren't many titles being developed for that genre, I think it has the potential to blow up. Now we don't know a lot, so I'm not gonna gas it up, obviously, but I'm excited to see which lane 2K ends up going with this. Just for some more context, it was the story of the morning because it was trending on Twitter. Everybody who's been playing football games for the last two decades is gonna be put on notice. If I'm being very, very honest, before we get off the topic, it's gonna be incredibly difficult to compete with EA considering they've had two decades almost of uncontested runway to improve their product. It's way easier to make an arcade game than it is to make a simulation game. Simulation has to mimic real life and that comes with new technological advances. It's part of the reason why when NBA Live disappeared for the four or five years that it did, it had no chance of getting back into the game with NBA 2K and that became very, very clear. So with the new generation of consoles coming up and there's gonna be an entirely different framework and hopefully the limitations that the developers have been feeling on this generation of consoles is lifted, hopefully we can begin to see that chasm get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the next time that EA has to renegotiate their exclusivity, hopefully it falls apart and then NFL 2K can make a simulation play or a different kind of product. But it's smart. They're using the NFL 2K name that everybody knew and loved growing up and they're attaching it to this probably entirely new product just so people get excited and hyped about it. It's a smart business move. Anyway, I'm excited to see where it ends up, but also it is 2K, so I'm hoping they do the thing correctly. It would be cool if we got like a My Park version of NFL. That would be wild. If you could just walk around different, oh man, that would be. <laughs> but I'm not gonna get my hopes too high, fellas. For our next story of the day, oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, there's been some scamming going on in the NBA 2K community. What a shame, what a shame, what a shame. There's a YouTuber that goes by the name Legs Ethan that dropped a video explaining that for the past few months, he's been editing for T-Jack. Both T-Jack and him agreed on a rate that he was gonna get paid and he worked those months without being paid but with the promise that at some point he was gonna get a longer term contract. In the video he explained that every time he got close and he asked about it, he kind of felt like it was being pulled away from him so he had to work towards it, it got pulled away from him. And so he worked for free for a few months with the promise that he would eventually get all that back pay for the work that he did. The work totaled up to something past $4,000 and T-Jack only ended up paying him 600 something of that $4,000 because that's what he said the work was worth. So the guy dropped the video on YouTube explaining his situation saying we agreed on these terms but the terms changed because T-Jack just decided he didn't like the videos anymore. Obviously the situation began to gain some traction. It was actually one of the topics me and Lo talked about on the podcast and so um, as the situation began to grow I guess T-Jack realized it's more serious than he would have previously thought. And so I'm glad that after everything that this guy has been through working for free over the course of three four months. By the way he's 16 years old. He ended up getting the money that he was owed. Now throughout a story like this, I would usually throw to the video so he could kind of explain in his words, but the video was taken down. And you know what's crazy? I downloaded the video on my laptop, but because he took it down out of respect for him, I don't want to re-upload it here on my channel, nothing like that. You know what's crazy is I called that that was going to happen. I was like, most likely T-Jack or Overtime, whichever one decides to end up paying the guy, is going to tell him, look, listen, Ethan, you're going to get paid, okay? But can you take down the video? And eventually he ended up taking down the video and I'm happy for him. He eventually ended 
ended up being paid. So it seems like the situation was just a series of miscommunications that could have been cleared up with better communication. But the part that keeps me uneasy was the screenshots that Ethan showed of T-Jack almost bullying him, saying things like, you can't work for another content creator if this word gets out. Almost trying to silence him. I'm not gonna pay you, but if you say anything, I'm gonna make sure your career doesn't move forward. And that is ludicrous bully behavior from a guy who does not have a, enough clout to have that kind of ego, right? Like if it was like the biggest YouTuber saying some like that, you went a little far, but you are the biggest YouTuber, you could potentially make something like that happen. But T-Jack, not only do you not have pull in the 2K community, but that's some corny goofball shit my guy. So I'm happy the guy ended up being paid, but I still feel some kind of way that T-Jack would treat an editor like that. That's not any way to treat anybody that's been helping you out for the past few months. Or a human being, generally speaking, right? You don't want to treat human beings like that. Toasted put out a tweet saying, in all honesty though, people like T-Jack are the reason why editors and designers want to leave the 2K community. The majority of them pay like shit or sometimes not even at all. The people who do it know who they are. <laughs> there was even a funny... <laughs> <laughs> there was a funny Twitter page that was created called Did T-Jack Pay His Editor? And uh, <laughs> until he did end up paying his editor, there was daily tweets. <laughs> so I'm glad that even though it is like an unfortunate situation for both parties involved, that we were able to make light of it and get some smiles out the situation. There's been an update to the T-Jack situation I just wanna cover briefly because he just released his own video where he briefly, very oh so briefly, talked about the topic. In the video, he says this. That's what I'm kinda of trying to do, you know? All I'm trying to do is, uh, like I said, you guys already know the vibes, but if there's anything that I did out there um, for you guys to be mad at me or anybody to directly be mad at me, I just wanna say that I apologize and advance all of, like, from here on out, I promise you guys that I will make sure that I don't make any mistakes. You guys look at me as T-Jack and as a YouTuber, but I am human as well. I do make mistakes. And you know, all I can do from those mistakes is learn and continue to be better. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can't really talk. I know you, there's some of you that wanna know the little situation, um, but I can't really go into details. Um, I can't actually at all, I'm not allowed to. But I just want you guys to know that that was a big miscommunication and uh, it will not happen ever, ever, ever again. Boom! I'm fully aware that people make mistakes and I'm happy that he at least apologized for what happened and he's saying he wants to improve. Because at the end of the day, that's all anyone really wants. Nobody's trying to end careers or finish this person off. If you can learn from the thing and then not do it again, everybody stands to benefit from that. So I rate him for, for saying that right there. It seems as though, based off of the tone in the video, that legally he's not allowed to say anymore. He must have signed some kind of contract. Maybe it has something to do with overtime. I'm not sure. Yeah, because the whole thing did look like a miscommunication. This person told the editor one thing and T-Jack said something else. This was promised by one person and then not by another. So if we're gonna end this story off on a positive note, T-Jack, good stuff on paying the editor what he was owed. And congratulations on apologizing. A lot of people wouldn't have done that. And uh, obviously it seems as though you can't talk about it in the detail that you wanted to, but um, the apology itself will suffice. The editor got what he wanted. At the end of the day, everyone's better for it. For our next story of the day, Chad Johnson, an NFL, an ex-NFL player, had a funny tweet he put out. It's not really a story, but I thought it was funny. You guys might want to see it. TMZ tweeted saying, Chad Johnson taken to the hospital, says ex-girlfriend destroyed his life. <laughs> You might be wondering, how could this ex-girlfriend have destroyed his life? Well, Chad Johnson explains in his own words, I'm okay, she just deleted my my player on NBA 2K20. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chad Johnson, man, we've been there, my guy, okay? We all been there, okay? I'm gonna let you know right now, you have to hit up 2K support. They will get you your player back, all right? So don't trip, your life is still in check, intact. <laughs> this is a story. <laughs> You should have made a video, Chad. You didn't know that those get millions of views on YouTube. For our final story of the day, NBA 2K closely works with Make-A-Wish. Yeah, that's not news to most people because they've done plenty of great things for Make-A-Wish kids and incorporated them in meetings or scanned their face into the game or just showed them love in a way that I feel like 
more people need to appreciate. And they did another instance of it recently. There's a content creator now by the name of the Buddy Boy 5 who um, was working with Make-A-Wish and got connected with NBA 2K. And Ronnie and the crew plugged him with not only a face scan, but with the logo in the game. And it's an original logo, by the way. They didn't just throw a random like VIP logo on him. This is what the Make-A-Wish logo looks like in the game, which by the way, looks infinitely better than every other logo. That's dope. And so the story was great and it was positive. This kid got this opportunity. He got verified in the game, which is great. And then he began to see more success on his YouTube and his Twitch. He put out this tweet. Yo, thank you guys so much for 300 YouTube subscribers. Been a crazy last 24 hours. But at the end of the day, none of this can ever stop us from grinding. I'm dedicated more than ever. Spam up your favorite emoji in the comment section. Let's go. And he linked here to his YouTube channel where he just hit 300 subscribers. Things got even better for him because he put out a follow up tweet saying we hit 2600 followers today man i'm so blessed got the greatest supporters ever flex emoji was a rough day but turned out to be an amazing day later on shout out to everybody who supports me we going crazy with a fire emoji linking to his twitch where he got 2.6 thousand followers agent how could this amazing story go wrong this is so positive and wholesome uh leave it to the 2k community guys because ronnie put out this tweet Oh, I should probably preface it because Ronnie didn't preface it in the thing. Oh, his, his account got hacked. And so he lost his player and somebody was walking around with his hacked player on the My Park. Like days after it happened, he lost his account. Ronnie put out a tweet saying, I have to keep reminding myself that a few people aren't representative of our great community whole, but I don't know how anyone on this planet would feel good hacking a kid from Make-A-Wish. We are going to make it whole for Will, but this does not sit right with me. LD2K responded to Ronnie saying, We all have our fun, but I'm super proud of the work you've done with them in helping create some memories with those at Make-A-Wish. Some of my most memorable career highlights come from being involved. You're right about this as well. So it's like, oh man, this is tragic. This was such a great wholesome story and then it just took a left turn for no reason. I guess the only positive I could think about the situation is that of all of this, he's gonna get more clout out the situation now. And so most likely his YouTube and his Twitch is gonna see more attention. I'm gonna link both of those in the description. I recommend you guys go watch his content, show him some love. So after all the shenanigans went down, he was able to get his account back and he put out a tweet on Twitter saying this. I just wanna take a minute and thank Ronnie. This man went out of his way to get me my account back and worked so hard for many hours. He is an amazing person and the most genuine person you will ever meet. Without him today, would have been very tough. I love you, Ronnie. Now, Will, I don't know about the genuine and the nice part of the story that you just said right there. But I will say this, in the events I have went to a 2K, Ronnie even tried to connect me with Make-A-Wish because I, he spends a lot of time trying to make kids' dreams come true. Now, I will never understand why it would be anyone's dream to meet Ronnie, me personally. But I would understand if that was someone's, no, I wouldn't still, I still wouldn't do that. <laughs> But if it's their dream to be involved in the developing process of NBA 2K, to make that happen for them and to go out of their way, listen, we criticize Ronnie 2K a lot here on this channel, but right here, we're gonna have to give him his credit, all right? Because he definitely deserves it. I'm glad everything went well, you know, after it was all said and done. Will, I hope your channels take off and I hope you continue to grind, you're a strong guy. And everybody in 2K community, let's take a lesson from this man, let's get some more positive stories out there. Because it, it needs drama list, whole lot of negative stories, not as many positive stories, and I wanna cover some positive ones. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like. Remember the AMP channel link in the description. Go ahead and follow that. We're trying to get to 59,997 subscribers. Anyway, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Agent Beamstar out. That was cringy, but we'll keep it in.